You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about financial freedom milestones. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about what the significant turning points are on the way towards achieving financial freedom. It's something that I've thought about a lot and I hope it will be useful for you too um, in helping to you to map out what your own goals are and what the process looks like. Um, if you are interested in financial freedom and you're looking at how you're going to get there, what are those points along the way that are going to tell you you know, that you've achieved a certain amount of financial freedom. Now, just to say I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. This is just my opinion. So I hope you find it helpful. And But I would also be very interested to hear if you have different views about this or if you have any feedback about it. Um, but just uh, bear in mind that it's it's your responsibility to make your own decisions about money. Um, this is just me providing my opinion in case it's uh, interesting for you. So let's talk about what the milestones are on the way to financial freedom. The first one that comes to mind for me uh, that I think is really important is financial independence. And by that, I mean sustaining yourself uh, from your job or your work income on a month to month basis. So another way of describing this would be, you know, when you reach that point where you're paying your own way, and that means that you have a job um, and that job is giving you a regular income stream and you're not living off other people. What I really mean is you're no longer living off your parents. So you are supporting yourself on a month by month basis from the job that you have. Now, when I say that you're not living off your parents, I, I really mean that you are financially independent from your parents. And that means not only are you not be living with them and being supported by them, but you're also not receiving significant subsidies from them. I say that because there are many people who go into their 20s and even their 30s, uh, and sometimes even longer, who, who are still financially dependent on subsidies from their parents or, their, or from their family. And I've, I've spoken about this before in a previous podcast, but that has a huge impact on your own level of financial development and your path towards uh, financial freedom. And it means that you really are not yet in a place where you're, you're able to begin the, the path towards financial freedom. An example of this would be that if you receive subsidies with your housing from your parents, let's say that they subsidize your mortgage or pay some of your rent or whatever it is, let's say that they're, they're paying three thousand pounds per annum or dollars you can convert this into whatever um, currency you're thinking in if you are financially independent and you are receiving that kind of money from investment income let's say that you were earning three percent on your investments free and clear that would mean that you would have to have a hundred thousand pounds to be earning that three thousand that you receive from your parents every year so receiving subsidy puts you in a frame of reference where it's almost like you imagine that you have a lot more financial assets than you really do. And you live as though you had a lot more financial freedom than you really do. And it actually prevents you from getting on the path towards achieving your own financial freedom. Another aspect of paying your own way is not just not living off your parents, but it's not living off loans. And typically, you know, this will be something that happens if you're in college where you will be, maybe you have a job or even more than one job, but you're still living uh, substantially off loans. That means that actually you're not really paying your way, you're accumulating debt. Now, that's something that you may choose to do uh, to get through college and so forth. And that's a choice that you can make. But just to be clear, while you're doing this, it means that you haven't reached that milestone of actually sustaining yourself from month to month. So by sustaining yourself from month to month, you're in a, in a position where you're not accumulating new debt. 
So you're not increasing your debt daily. And typically, college postpones the time that you reach this milestone towards your own financial freedom. So those years while you're accumulating college loans, you're actually further away from reaching that first milestone, which is that with every passing month, you're, you're sustaining yourself from your own income and you're not accumulating more debt. And again, it's worth pointing out that some people don't achieve this until well into their 30s or even later. So this is a very, very important milestone to just to be sustaining yourself. Even if you are on a very, very low income, you can still reach this milestone. And if you do, uh, it's a, a fantastic achievement to, to look forward to because it means that you are really on the way towards financial freedom. Just paying your own way and uh, having a job that sustains you month to month without accumulating more debt. So what's the next milestone? I think the next thing that, that really comes to mind for me is achieving positive net worth in your financial life. When people are thinking about this, they talk about it in terms of getting out of debt. That's not exactly what it means, although this is, this is kind of what they're talking about. What it means is that getting to a point where your assets are greater than your liabilities. So, for example, the money that you have in the bank is bigger than any outstanding debt that you might have. Or the money that you have in investments is bigger than any outstanding debt that you might have. And even if that's a very low number, just it being in positive territory on your net worth is a fantastic milestone to reach. That's a very significant step on the way towards financial freedom. And it's a, it's a fantastic goal, in my opinion, to go for. Now, it's interesting to see that consumer debt really pushes people further away from this goal. So in other words, taking on debt on credit cards to pay for consumption items actually um, postpones the day when you will achieve this goal of, of positive net worth. Not only have a lot of people got uh, student debt or college debt, uh, but they also then have consumer debt where they have credit cards uh, that they're using to fund a lifestyle that means that they're carrying this load of liability, this load of debt um, that is preventing them from getting anywhere closer to financial freedom. Another thing to think about is that if you choose to buy a house with a mortgage, you are taking on a very, very large liability. That's a huge debt that you take on. And with mortgages, the value of the house is uncertain, so the, the asset side of it is uncertain, but what's certain is the debt that you have. So you're basically taking on a lot of debt for something that's that doesn't necessarily have the value to pay for it. So that's, again, another thing to consider, I think, in, in the decision about whether or not to buy a property is that, is that it's not the same goal as achieving positive net worth. And it actually can take you in a very different direction and postpone the day that you achieve positive net worth. And again, there are some people who never achieve positive net worth in their lifetimes. They're always in debt. Their liabilities always outstrip their assets. And so if you do get to a point where you don't owe anything or what you owe, you could easily pay for tomorrow with the, uh, with the assets that you have. That is a fantastic point of freedom to reach and a very, very significant milestone on the way towards financial freedom. The next significant milestone is making your first investment. And what I mean by this is the first time that you put money into an income producing asset like shares or bonds or something else. Now, this could get a bit complicated to try and explain because you may also put it into an asset that you are not going to achieve income from, but capital gain, something like precious metals. But that's sort of beside the point. The, the key point is that you're putting aside money, which is not just money that you haven't used yet in your bank account that you know you're going to use at some point, but it's actually money that you are putting to work for you. You're not planning to spend that money. You're planning for that money to have a job in your finance, which is to produce more money for you. And so it's not just, oh, this is money in my bank account, which is safe here 
uh, earning a bit more interest until I spend it. This is actually money that you 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 plan not to spend and you plan to put to work to generate more money for you. And that's a milestone on your path towards financial freedom because you're actually you are now an investor when you do that. Once you start putting aside money to work for you in that way, you are on the path towards financial freedom. Again, when people think about investing, one of the key things that people talk about a lot is buying a house. And I would, I've said this before, but just to make the point again, buying a house is actually not reaching this milestone at all. In fact, it's something quite different. Buying a house is not an investment. It's a consumption item. When you buy a property to live in it, the job of that property is for you to live in there. You don't actually realize any income from that property. And yes, you may be able to sell it in the future for something close to what you bought it for, or you might lose money on it. We don't know. But the point is, it's really a consumption item. It's not an investment. And it does involve taking on a lot of debt and so forth. So so although a lot of people think of buying a house as the first really significant financial investment that they make, actually it isn't. It's consumption, uh, what they're doing. It's not investment. Uh, and it involves taking on a huge amount of debt. So it's, it's a very different thing to the way that people often talk about it in real life, I think. The next milestone that I want to talk about is when your net worth surpasses your annual expenses. And a very simple way of saying this would be to say that you have enough money put aside that you could live for a year without working. And you know what your um, annual expenses are. It's not the same thing as what you earn. It's what you th the minimum amount that you actually need to live off. Unfortunately, for most people, what you earn and what you live off is exactly the same thing, and people are living paycheck to paycheck. But actually, if you know what your expenses are, it should be lower than whatever your um, salary or your uh, income is at any level because that's living within your means. And if you know what your expenses are, when you get to that point where you see in your savings accounts or your investments enough resources, enough assets that you could live off your savings, off your investments for a year, that's a fantastic milestone to reach. That gives you a huge amount of freedom because it means you can li leave whatever job it is that you're doing safe in the knowledge that you have a whole year if you want to start a business, if you want to look for other work, if you want if you, other things happen in your life, if there are emergencies or whatever. And this, I think, is a really amazing milestone to reach. Again, it's one that, um, sadly, I... I don't know what the percentages are, but I would think that, that um, the majority of people don't reach this milestone at least until they're middle age and maybe never. And I'm sure a, a very high proportion of people never reach this milestone. But if you do reach it, it gives you such a safety buffer and such a lot of room in your negotiation about the kind of work that you want to do and the things that, you know, the choices that you want to make. It's a very, very significant milestone to reach. And it, just having that freedom to know that you can live for a year off your expenses is a really, really, in my view, great goal to go for. But the point about this goal is that if you were to live for a year off your expenses, you would be back at square one. You'd be consuming your capital. So it's still the point where it's good to have that um, buffer to know that you could live for a year from your investments or from your savings. But in doing so, you would consume that capital and be back to square one where you'd have to start building up your net worth again. And that brings us really to the, the next milestone, which is where we really start to get to the point where you are financially free. And that is where your annual passive investment income is greater than your annual expenses. So in other words, it's not that you could live for a year from the money in the bank. It's that you could live for a year from the interest on your investments that are in the bank or in your stockbroker or wherever these investments are. So in other words, the amount of income that is being generated by your investments is bigger than your expenses. And that means that you can actually live from your investments. 
And this last one, it, I think it takes a couple of years to work out whether or not you really have achieved that goal because it needs to be that your passive income is bigger than your expenses and takes into account the problem of inflation and tax and so forth. So you need to be in a position where you are not consuming your capital, your investments, and you are also still taking into account the falling value of money uh, in purchasing power so that you're basically maintaining yourself from your investments, but you're still also maintaining your investments from the kind of drip, drip loss in value that happens with inflation. You're making enough investment income both to sustain the capital and to give you uh, an income that you can take off it. And at that point, you are financially free because you can choose to do whatever you want to do and you can still live from your passive uh, income streams. And some people achieve this at very low levels of income. If you look at the, uh, the website called Early Retirement Extreme, there is a movement of people who aim to do this by living super frugally. So they live off as, as small an expense as they possibly can with the aim of living frugally but free. So when you're thinking about financial freedom, you don't have to think about it in terms of being super wealthy. It can be done at relatively lower levels of expenditure. And I encourage you to look at Early Retirement Extreme as an example of, of that kind of approach. And it can also be done, obviously, at higher levels of expenditure um, if you are aware of what you're doing and you're not consuming your capital and you're able to live from your investments. So that's really what I understand to be financial freedom. And what I've tried to do in this podcast is to talk through what the various steps on the way are to achieving that uh, financial freedom. So I hope that's helpful. It's just my opinion. I'd be very interested to hear if you have other views or you know, if you have other thoughts on this subject. Please do uh, give me your feedback. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.